Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to the Elevate Your Soul podcast. Today, I interview Amy Lee Westervelt, a life and business coach for empaths. And together, we discuss what is an empath and what exactly does it mean when people say they are an empath. Because aren't we all empaths? We discuss how to navigate through life as an empath, such as work, relationships, and friends, and how to use your empathy as a strength and not a weakness. After listening to this podcast episode, you may discover you're actually not an introvert. Maybe you're just an empath. Amy Lee has a Facebook page that you can check out called Unstoppable Empaths. The link for that is in the show notes. And she also was so kind and shared us for free her ebook on how to master your gifts as an empath and discover the seven major areas of concentration that you must master in order to live an abundant and fulfilling life. The link for that is in the show notes. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode and I hope you can take something from it. Hello, Amy Lee. Welcome to the Elevate Your Soul podcast. Hey, how's it going? So good. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. First question I have for you is what elevates your soul? What elevates my soul? Um, Being able to work with somebody, whether it be a friend or a client or one of my children, being able to show them some kind of power that they had to change something in their lives for the better that they didn't know that they had that they'll have for the rest of their life like lights my soul on fire that's so beautiful that's so beautiful all right can you tell us what an empath is yeah absolutely so an empath um there's lots of different definitions the one that i think really resonates and that's a word that works all the time for empaths is resonate um but one of the things that really resonates is a person who can feel the emotional energy of another being. And I say another being because it could be animals, it could be, well, it could even be plants. Um, Some empaths are able to feel energy in spaces that were once occupied by beings and no longer are. So there really is kind of a spectrum in terms of like what different empaths can feel. But the general consensus is that a a highly sensitive person feels their own emotions much more deeply, whereas an empath can actually, their energy field expands to overlap the energy field of other beings and they actually can feel it. And sometimes if they're not careful, they can't tell the difference between that energy being in their own body and them absorbing it from an outside source. Yeah. Interesting. So a lot of people get empaths confused with highly sensitive people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For a long time, they actually were the same definition. Right. So like, wait a second, I'm really sensitive, but I know everything I'm feeling is in here. And then there are some people that are feeling, you know, and also not to jump around too much, but there's also ideas about what, you know, um, creates an empath. And some people believe that it comes from um, having some kind of emotional trauma or emotional abuse and having to adapt to that. And so a highly sensitive wouldn't necessarily have that, uh, that trait, I guess. So they do, they, they, they're kind of like a Venn diagram. They overlap a lot. But there are definitely similar, uh, excuse me, differences between between them. Yeah, interesting. Can you tell us what the strengths and weaknesses are of an empath? Yeah, so um, it's kind of like I said, it's kind of a spectrum, and different ones are different ways. Um, I actually have an ebook I'm going to give you guys after, um, and it actually outlines seven different areas that empaths struggle with and what our strengths and weaknesses are for each of those. But just to give you some examples, empaths are incredible manifestors. We are the best because we can align emotionally with pretty much anything. The problem is we also have real bad self-esteem, real low self-esteem. So we don't necessarily want the things we want. Like we don't manifest what we want. I kind of like to say that we're really, really good at sucking at manifesting. (laughs) Like we do it on purpose, if that makes sense. And we suck um, at manifesting because of the low self-esteem? 
Right, because we don't genuinely believe we deserve what it is we're trying to align with, so we're not really aligning with it. Yeah. So we're kind of like tongue in cheek, like, oh, I want, I'm so happy and grateful. But deep down you're going, but if the universe knew that I did X, Y, and Z, right. because um, I think empaths, you know, because we have low self-esteem, because we're the first ones to fall in the sword, because we deeply want other beings not to suffer, we will make ourselves wrong every single time if it means that someone else doesn't have to suffer, which right. is why, you know, all kinds of other things, narcissism and all that stuff um, ends up, you know, we end up being prey to that. Yes. Um, I know I'm throwing all these crazy words out. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious to know, like the, with the manifesting thing coming from the low self-esteem and not being able to manifest because there's this core belief in there that you're not worthy of getting uh, what you desire because you're not worth it or whatever. I feel like that's a super common trait in people in general. So, um, why is it that you say empaths have really low self-esteem? Cause I feel like that's like an overall issue in the Western world. Yeah. Um, well, because of the fact, again, because an empath can feel the emotional energy of somebody else, yeah. what's happening is we are dissecting everything somebody does down to the tiniest nuance that a normal person, I'm going to say normal for the terms of this. I don't mean that empaths aren't normal, although we aren't, but I don't mean that. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah. just, you know, the difference between an empath and a non-empath they don't look at the nuances of a person's behavior. So like, for example, if you and I worked together and I walked in and I said, hey, RL, how are you? And you were like, yesterday you were like, hey. And today you were like, oh, hey. Or if you're not a person who puts smileys after your conversation, I'm yeah. gonna be like, she doesn't like me. She didn't, she looked, she left me on red. She's mad at me. And so empaths are so much more in tune to the nuances of body language, of the way of intonation of the way that people behave, of the way that they express themselves. If somebody's having a bad day, they might be trying to hide it, but I can feel it. And so yeah. I internalize that. Yes. So that is something that empaths start to be like, well, it's probably something I did. Well, I probably you know, made her mad. Have you ever gotten a phone call or someone got a phone call where they were talking to you and you're like typing out something and you're in this deep conversation and they leave you unread and they don't answer and you're like, oh my God, they're never going to talk to me again. I am a POS. Like I suck. And then a couple of minutes later, they're like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. My doctor called. And you're like, oh. yeah. Interesting. Like, oh, I don't yeah. Interesting. You say that. Cause I feel like there's, there's two separate issues. So I feel like there is the one that you can physically feel the other person person is having a bad day or they're not in a good space. And I feel like that is what an empath is, but the whole like not leaving a smiley face or leaving a rest message on red or not texting you back in time. I feel like all of that worry actually comes from low self-esteem. So like I wouldn't want, and I'm pointing that out because I wouldn't want someone listening or everyone listening could probably relate and be like, oh, this means that I'm an empath because, you know, when someone doesn't give me signals, that means that I feel like they don't love me or I've done something wrong. Whereas that's all psychological and you're actually judging with your mind and it's coming from a place of low self-esteem because you feel like you've done something wrong. But I feel like an empath, cause I feel like I'm, I personally, I think I'm an empath, but I don't have super low self-esteem in certain areas. Obviously I have places to work on, but like for me, if I, I can like use my brain and logic and be like, Oh, maybe they didn't message me back or maybe they're just having a really shitty day and that's fine. And I, and I can make um, sense of that consciously. Like it's okay. It's not my fault. They're having a bad day or, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, but as an empath, what happens when you're around someone or, or living someone, it's like, you don't have a choice to absorb their energy because you're in their physical energy field. And that's what I feel my issue is, is rather than internalizing and using my brain and being like, Oh, maybe they don't like me. I, I'm, I, I can use my brain and make logic of it, but my, my body is physically energy, like it's vibrating at someone else's frequency. And then as you said earlier, is it's hard to decipher, is this really my energy? Is it because I'm feeling triggered or something happened to me today that I didn't, you know, that I didn't realize actually really affected me? Or am I just picking off the vibration of someone else and vibrating at their frequency right now? And is that why I'm feeling anxious or sad or depressed or angry? Because I feel like I, I just absorb other people's frequency, basically. Like I see it, empaths as a very energetic thing rather than a, a psychological thing like you're using your mind for. It. It's like, 
Assumption. Right. But you're failing to mention here that you also can pick up energy over other channels. So you can pick up energy in instant messages. You can pick up energy over the telephone. You can pick up energy, um, you know, depending on, on whether you're an intuitive, you can pick up energy telekinetically. So just yeah. because you're not, you know, so yes, you are still having that energetic pull, push and pull over those messages and you are still getting that energetic feedback. So it actually is the same thing. I'm not talking about just your regular old run of the mill, like, oh, they left me on red. I'm right. talking about like your energy's there and then all of a sudden that person's energy went somewhere else and you feel that withdrawal in right. that moment. And so that is that empath part of it, as opposed to just somebody who, to, you know, I mean, there's definitely that, there are definitely, again, there's overlap, but for the most part, energetically an empath can feel someone as long as they're kind of connected to them in some way energetically. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like feeling when you're on a phone call with someone or, or as you said, as, as crazy as it seems like just a text from someone. You well, can... even like if you look at the post, like a comment, the comments on like a news article yeah. and you get real, real mad when you're reading it, it's because you're energetically connected to that person in that moment. Yeah. And you're like, why am I mad? This person said this six months ago. But yeah. in that moment, you are in tune. You're <laughs> vibrationally in tune to them. So yeah. it, it is actually an up to the minute thing. So, and, and kind of to take that back to that weakness thing, it's yeah. more that as an empath, we feel like everybody else's needs come first because we can deal with our own pain. We've been dealing for, with it for a while. Yeah. Right. We've been dealing with it because of, again, going back to maybe that emotional abuse or what have you, yeah. but we don't want, we don't want to feel somebody else's pain because we're feeling their pain too. So what we do, we put our energy onto trying to stop their pain. Yes. So we think that everybody else deserves to have their boxes checked before we do. So maybe low self-esteem isn't the right word, but what I mean is that we put ourselves last in the sense that our needs are at the bottom of the hierarchy, which is obviously opposite because the better you take care of yourself, the better you can yes. take care of the people you love. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we come at it from a different perspective. Um, and then another one that, you know, is a strength and a weakness is that empaths are really good about knowing what needs to be done in that, like, they're very conscious of the yeah. pieces that need to get put into place to make something happen. Yeah. But they also, again, going back to that putting yourself last thing, they're really easily reprioritized by somebody else's needs. And so they have, and again, I should say we, because it's us, um, <laughs> we have, you know, um, we have an issue with prioritizing ourselves and our needs. Um, or even just things we're tasked to do because something else seems to be more important. And you'll find that's kind of the, um, the theme with empaths is that we really just kind of like, don't, we don't have that intrinsic belief that we are meant to have it all. We think everybody else is, we love the law of attraction. We're all about it. We're all about some gold cards. We're all about the secret, but don't bring that back on me because you don't know what I did. You don't understand what you know, who I really am. And that's what I try to break empaths of every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. I still, I still feel like so many of us, um, empath or not can relate to that feeling. Like we've all been through something traumatic and we all feel like we're not worthy of truly getting what we want. You know, we all right. suffer from low self-esteem and those internal mm -hmm. negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just happen to, you know, to specialize with that group. And while I can't say empaths are the only ones who feel this way, I can say pretty confidently that by and large, it's something empaths deal with enough that I created an entire system to support that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's super common. It's super common. Can I ask what made you realize you were an empath? Like at what age um, did you find out you were an empath and like what sort of things like clicked for you and kind of made sense when you, once you found that out? Yeah. So I wish I had some magical story to tell you that like, you know, angels came down and told me or something like that. Yeah. Um, from a very young age, I knew that I was different, um, in that I, I knew that I thought a lot and I knew that I thought about thinking, which is kind of like a weird thing. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until my life coach actually, who incidentally is an empath coach as well, right. um, asked me one day, she was like, could you be an empath? And I'm like, what's an empath? And she's like, well, go look it up. So, um, when I looked it up and, and looked up what an empath was, I was like, okay, 
this is definitely, I mean, and this is what now, seven years ago or something like that. Yeah. Um, this is definitely, you know, I resonate with this. And then the more that I dug into it and the more that I read about it, um, I, I realized that's what I was, but I wasn't specializing in that yet. I was in this big network marketing company. Um, I was really high up there. I had this giant team and, nice. you know, I was miserable because I was just emotionally drained all the time. And, um, and then, you know, once I went out and did private coaching, I found that the people that resonated with me and my message, they all had the same qualities and go figure. I was like, wait a second, these are the people I can help. And so yeah. once I tweaked that messaging and started working specifically with those folks, the results were like instantaneous and you can always do better for others than you can for yourself, you know? So yeah. it was just, yeah. And, and just ever since then, it's kind of been my, because I feel like there's kind of two schools of thought with empaths. There's like, oh my gosh, I'm an empath and it's such a curse. And then there's, oh my gosh, I'm an empath and look at all these incredible things that I can use yeah. to leverage my place as a light worker and all these other things. And so you know, I kind of straddle that place of like, Hey, come on, you know, over here and hang out with us from this yeah. side, but also <laughs> let's bring you down here and kind of give you a plan. And yeah. so that's kind of where, yeah, it was, uh, I know that was a long answer. Yeah, but. no, it, it makes sense. Like, yeah, I feel like as well, there's so many strengths and weaknesses. And as long as you can learn to use your strengths as an empath and like navigate through your emotions, um, right. Yeah. Then you can use it as a strength. And I feel like it's so important as well who you hang out with as an empath. What are your thoughts on that? Like who you choose to be in a relationship with, who you choose to hang out with after work, uh, who your roommates are. Yeah, I definitely think that there has to be some cognition about, you know, energetic transfer. Um, you have to get real good at boundaries as an empath. And that is one thing that I wish that I could go back in time to my 19, 20 year old, you know, crazy histrionic self and be like, girlfriend, like, let's get some boundaries. Because yeah. again, you know, talking weaknesses, empaths are real big on like, oh, but he's so different. You know, I posted on the, um, on several empaths Facebook pages, a picture of uh, one of those uh, angler fish, those really deep fish and yeah. it's with that light dangling. And there's this little fish and it says empaths be like, but I can see their light. Yeah. It's so true because, <laughs> because that's what we do. We romanticize how incredible somebody is. Or I remember I was dating a guy in college and I was like, dad, but he's getting his license. And he's like, Amy Lee, like what girlfriend, like, what are you doing? Like, you, like to me, it was like, he was so bad that the little good that he was, was like, incredible. Like, look how hard he's trying dad. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, that's the thing with, with boundaries with empaths. They're like, they, they give everybody a pass because again, everybody mm -hmm. is more right than I am. I probably did something to upset them or I'm yeah. not good yeah. enough in some way to have these. I mean, we don't even think we deserve to have boundaries. We yeah. just don't like, we're like, Oh yeah, but I can't, I can't tell him that's not okay. Exactly. Why the hell exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I get real passionate about boundaries. All right. Yeah, that's, that's why we attract, um, as long as, especially as long as we're not aware we're empaths, I feel we attract people who are a little bit narcissistic or like to use our no, qualities to, yeah, 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 absolutely. I completely agree with you. Exactly. And it's because we don't have those boundaries. We try so hard to make everybody else happy. We are narcissistic supply and it. Like, I mean, it's like, you know, we're just like a battery. And they just hook onto it and just, I mean, in the, the levels of, of narcissism and the, the ways that they, you know, can do what they do. I mean, you'll have to do a whole podcast on that. Go find someone who specializes in narcissism and all that stuff because it's just so, you know, I had a, I had a parent who was a narcissist. So that's where I got a lot of parent? my, yeah, my father, my wow. father. Is a okay. yeah. So growing up, you know, um, being, being just emotionally in turmoil all the time. Yeah. is kind of where I, I got my, my empath powers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. So how do you use that as a strength now? Your, like your empathy. Um, well, like I said, there's so many different areas of it. Um, but some of the ones I use are that, you know, because I have healthy boundaries, I already know where Amy Lee ends and the world begins. And so when somebody comes to me that tries to violate that, I'm yeah. at the point now where I'm like, those are my boundaries and you are separate from that. I don't make them 
after the fact. They already exist, and here you come to my wall. So I definitely think I've gotten a lot better with that one. Um, also, um, energy management is a huge one for me, like knowing that I can actually dial different frequencies into my body in real time, and that if I notice and I'm starting to get, whether it's mine or not, is kind of irrelevant at this point. It doesn't really matter whose it is, yeah. um, except if it's something like, obviously, if it's emergent and I just like cut myself and I'm in pain, then that's mine and I need to deal with it. But yeah. other than that, I kind of just figure out what energetic frequency I want to be on. And then I kind of dial that into my body. I call that um, emotional programming. So like, I just go in and like, okay, I want to have joy. How can I think of a time when I had joy and kind of pour that into my body in this moment? So that's another one. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I hear a lot when I, if I have a conversation um, around the fact that I am an empath, like to someone close to me, try to get them maybe to understand me a little bit better. Um, I just feel like a lot of people, they automatically say like, oh, well, I'm an empath too. And, you know, I have feelings too, and I'm sensitive and I can feel when you're upset and that makes me feel bad. Um, or, you know, the term like everyone's an empath. And I feel like there could be a different term for empaths because I do feel like everyone to a certain degree is an empath, but then there are like the, the highly sensitive extreme <laughs> empaths. And the way I would explain it is that everyone is an empath to the extent that yes, they can sense when someone else is in a bad mood, especially someone who you're close to, someone who you understand, someone who you spend a lot of time with. But for an empath, for you to understand them, it's like you feel that emotion or that frequency that they're vibrating at, but you feel it just 10 times more. It's so much more intense in your own body that it's almost like you become who they are. You become them in that very moment. You become their emotion that they're feeling in that very moment. And so even simple things like watching a movie or watching a TV show, empaths aren't really good at watching movies where there's something harmful or bad happens to a character that's really hard on an empath to watch. Like me personally, I can't watch horror films. I can't watch films where bad things happen to animals or to people because I just put myself in their shoes and I feel the pain as though it's happened to myself and it's just too much for my nervous system and for my emotions to handle. So I tend to only watch things that are nice to watch, easy on the nervous system and even like comedy, something that makes me laugh is definitely worthwhile. To someone who is listening right now and they're still confused like if they're an empath or not because they are sensitive and they, they don't like it when, you know, someone doesn't call them back or text them back or, or they can feel when someone else is upset because I feel like a lot of us can do that. Like what is the difference between uh, your average person who's in tune and like self-aware and then an empath? So that's a really good question. Believe it or not, it's one I get all the time. Whenever people come and join my Facebook community, they're like, I don't, like they come in and they're like, I don't know if I'm an empath. Like I think I might be. And the first thing I always say is look, we don't get make you get a tattoo here. Like you don't have to pledge your loyalty to empathness forever. If being in this community and learning about these things and how to move through the world helps you, girlfriend, stay here. You know what I mean? Like hang out with us, pull up a couch, let's chat, let's talk about what you're healing, what your you know what your journey is. And if it, one day you're like, you know what, this doesn't resonate, that's okay. Then yeah. go find what it is that is that. But I think we get hung up on labels and we feel like we have to, we have to like lean into something so much that we have to leave something else. And it's like, you know, you might be highly sensitive. You might be an empath. You might just be a person who's really in touch with your emotions, but like, yeah. who cares? You know what I mean? Like if, if you're getting a benefit out of hanging out with empaths, then keep hanging out with empaths. If you're getting a benefit of hanging out with you know, people in a certain MBTI group, then hang out with those folks. Like you don't have to decide. Um, if a person, you know, is like, I don't know if I'm an empath, I would just say, is, is thinking you're an empath helping you? Because if it is, keep thinking it. And if it's not, then make a different choice. But again, it's, it's not an all or nothing thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. But when you just said like, if you like hanging out with empaths, keep hanging out, keep hanging out with empaths, unless you're a narcissist. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And and a covert narcissist very well will come out and say, you know, oh, I'm an empath too. And yeah. you know, you touched on that a second ago. What do you do when somebody comes to you and says, you know, when you tell them you're an empath and they say, yeah. well, I'm an empath. Yeah. You're so one thing, you know, one thing I don't agree with, there's this book, um, this lady, Judith Orloff, she's like the empath queen and everybody yeah. talks about her all the time. But the problem I have with Judith is that she teaches empaths to feel like, look, this is how I am mm -hmm. and you need to deal with it. And I don't think that's the case yeah. at all. I think that anytime your, your way of being infringes on somebody else's way of being, that's gaslighting. I don't care who you are. And I yeah. call this out all the time in empath groups where people are like, I can't believe you just posted that and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? Scroll on by, scroll on by. Like yeah. if you are triggered by somebody sharing their truth, yeah, it's no problem. That's not their problem. Exactly. Yes. And, and, but at the same time, if you being an empath, like you're so emotional and somebody says like, you know, you're, I'm an empath too. Like as long as you're a, your the way that you are isn't making them less of who they are. Yeah. They have to get over it. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just feel like um with certain people, not everyone, but when you say you're an empath, some people are like, oh, what does that make me like a sociopath? <laughs> because I can't sense, you know, because I can't relate to other people or whatever. And it's like, oh no. yeah. You know yeah. <laughs> the other day, somebody said something about being an alpha empath and who identifies as an alpha empath. And I was like, yeah, I'm an alpha empath. To me, that means I'm a leader who happens to be an empath and I lead empaths. Somebody was like, um, an alpha empath is a narcissist. Anybody who has to be an alpha, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, like, you don't have to take it that way. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a superlative. I mean, you, you could, yeah. but like having, having differentiators doesn't mean that you think you're better than somebody. Yeah. Like, and so there are definitely people who are like, oh, you're, I even, I read an article where somebody said that a lot of empaths are narcissists because they use it as a crutch. And it's like, again, anybody who uses anything about themselves to control someone else, that's not okay. Yeah. But being able to say, you know what, I'm a highly sensitive person and I'm an empath. And when you, like my husband, he's not an empath. And yeah. I'll say to him sometimes, you know, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Why? Like, I just, I can feel something going yeah. on with you. Yeah. And it won't be till later that he's like, yeah, you know what? I guess I was just really, I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And so yeah. now he kind of understands when I say that it's not a manipulative, you know, well, stop being a jerk. It's like, I can feel something off with you. And he at least acknowledges that I feel that. He doesn't necessarily validate that I'm right, which right. we're working on that. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he definitely acknowledges that I feel that way. Yeah. And he's even kind of gotten me to the point where he's like, okay, don't say I am. And I'll say, okay, I'm sorry. I feel like, yeah. and that's when I'll kind of like, you know, I'll be it's like. So oh. true. It's so true. I have that as well. And it's hard when the person isn't very self-aware and, and something has triggered them earlier that day or just before and they don't realize it and then you ask them what's wrong and they say nothing because they actually don't think anything's wrong because they're not aware to the fact that something triggered them or made them upset but then you know something's made them upset because all of a sudden you start feeling that way and you're like why am I feeling that way like oh like I'm picking up on your you know your vibration right now Exactly. And some people you can say that to, and some people you can't, you know, some yeah. people don't, you tell them you're picking up on their vibration and they will look at you like you have a tinfoil hat on. Yes. 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 <laughs> not anyone in my world, not, none of my friends are like that, thank God. But yeah. Yeah. And, and again, boundaries, you know what I mean? Like if they were, you'd be like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. How can people find your ebook and find you online? Yeah. So, um, if you want, I can give it to you. And if you have show notes or whatever, I can give you yes. the, the link. Yep. Um, I have a group on Facebook. It's called unstoppable empaths. Um, we also have a page. We just started super uh, fun. And then my website is just gratitude and glamour.com. If you, you know, you want to meet up and I, I love new friend requests and everybody, like I said, everybody's welcome to, to hang out and learn more. And like I said, if you don't know for sure that you're an empath, come on in anyway. 
yeah. hang around with us for a little while, you might be like, these people, not my people. And we won't be offended. We have people come in and out all the time. You know, yeah. we want it to be exploratory. It's, yeah. it's not a secret society. We don't have initiation. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Oh, thank you so much. And I will get your, the links for your ebook and I'll put those in the show notes. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. I had a blast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was awesome. Hey YouTube fam, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button below. And if you think a friend, a family member, or just someone you know who could benefit from this podcast episode, please share this video with them. And if you've been enjoying the Elevate Your Soul podcast, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for new episodes weekly. Thank you.